Hello everyone and welcome back. We are here with the uh, round 7 which will be the last round of Masters today sure and one. we are having a clean win and in. Both players are at 4-1-1 now and a win will put them in top 8. Yeah, th the, the issue with having tournaments uh, with a kind of a smallish attendance like this is there's a big old bubble. I think four yes. people can be on the bubble to make it into top 8. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, we're like having a look. But these guys win in no bubbles. Yes. No drama. Yeah. These guys are safe if they win. Yeah. So they are definitely going to look for that. Yeah. And yeah, playing fast, making sure it's not a tie. And now you notice I'm back on commentary, having disappeared for a couple of rounds because it appears that we have something of a, a stall deck going on again. Yes. And I was I'd just summoned as a guys. There's we n we need you. Um, and this list is very different to the one we saw earlier on. It's playing two different stack attackers, two yeah. Dragonites, a Lance Prism yeah. star. <laughs> this is basically more, you're not having any energy, Guys, I'll find a way. I was just looking at the list and I was like, two Dragonite, okay. Where's the Dratini? <laughs> and, th and then you forgot that Lance yeah, Prism star was, was a card, like, right? I was like, is there a card that puts stage twos on bench <laughs> without? There is. There is. Yeah, there, there is. There is. So there we go. I guess with Steven that combo you can get it easily. So yep. yeah, makes sense. Um, and yeah, he also plays um, yeah White Kiram as you mentioned, two, uh, two of it, so he can um, yeah it's of course a very strong card we've seen it earlier with Sander being very strong against Pikazet. Yeah. And of course it's also very good against um, Rishram Charizard. And GX. there's also a promo copy of it as well, which I think is actually a metal type for different typings. Mm -hmm. Um, but so yeah, it looks like he's playing only the water typing, which is of course great because can take out take a knockout on uh, Charizard uh, uh, on like any fire Pokemon. Yeah. Actually. Um. So it's 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 an interesting thing. And then uh, so Lao Sai Tung is our other player. Lao Tung, sorry, um, is playing. Well, it's it's Zapdos, <laughs> <laughs> it but it has a Macargo in it. Yes, it is, uh, and it. Has uh, a frost rotom. Yeah. And so this like is a this is a guy who went. You know, I've seen enough Reshiram Charizards. I'm gonna I'm gonna wash them off. <laughs> I'm just gonna just, just get rid of them. Also, there's Basmosa. So, um, an interesting approach. Too interesting approach to two very um, popular decks. And here, uh, unfortunately for some, very good for others. Depending on which preferences you have, it's again a mill deck, as we said. Yeah. I hope you're enjoying those because they seem to do very good at this tournament. Well, I think it, it, it's a format that's very open, but it also ha it clearly has things that are exploitable. That's the yeah, only way you can do it's stall. Qu it's quite interesting that we have so much stall because, like, last tournaments have seen a uh, dominance of cards like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Madison had like none, right? Like, yeah, exactly. we were expecting quite. Like, there was kind of an expectation for quite a bit of stall at Madison, and yeah. then it just vanished. Yeah, like the dominance of Reshiram Charizard and the popularity of Pikazek seem to like keep it low. Mm -hmm. But apparently, Sander has uh, proven that the Pikazek matchup is uh, far better than people would usually assume. Yeah, sure. And uh, also, those white Kyrams seemingly making um, up for the uh, weakness to fire. So well, it, it just gives you an option of being sort of aggressive in the matchups yeah. where you. Kind of exactly. think you shouldn't be, but you can you can get you can get away with it. Yeah, those well, stall decks showing like um, they adapted, they are ready to take it home, and yeah. Also, rule of thumb always when stall did not, when stall didn't have any uh, significant uh, placings at the last tournament, always expect stall to do well. well stall goes <laughs> through a cycle, right? Stall yeah. is good, stall is bad, stall is good. Exactly. So yeah, I've, I've been talking to Robin before the tournament. He was like, oh, "I'm going to play Zapdos. I don't think anyone will play stall." And I was like, "Robin." It didn't have any showings the last tournament. You know what that means. Yeah, Espe especially because in Europe we do have a few players who are yes. known for playing stall. Like there's a, there's a handful of players who are ready to kind of set up yeah. and get like go for that. And I think both players are now ready, so we're gonna just quickly jump over. Yeah, um, see. so we can see the prize cards as they come down. Almost ready with a setup. So both players. Um, so Andrium has had a couple of results. Um, not for a little while, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah he pl he played um, interesting decks. For example, in um, Harrogate, he played um, attacking Steelix, mm -hmm. which was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. that he went like uh, eight or one day one, and then finished in top sixteen, I believe. Yeah, yes, eleven plays, and he also made uh, top thirty two at regional Malmo in two thousand back in two thousand uh, seventeen, eighteen. Now what? Yep. And uh, yeah. Whereas for yeah. Sai, we couldn't find anything on the yeah, database. Yeah, unfortunately, um. but. But both players are underway and ready to go, so and we can get yeah, into the main so game cam. We see a Hooper versus a Jirachi. <laughs> this is a thing that I think we're going to get very used to seeing for the next couple of minutes. Yeah, um, Adrian focusing very much on Vos Hooper, playing fourth, um, and Sai will be going first, which is always a great thing. 
Actually, interesting thing would be if he's playing Mars Shadow, but no, nope, it nope. doesn't look like it. There's no Mars Shadow in here. Ah, uh, that's always painful. That oftentimes means that um, Mill, of course, being favored in this matchup, can um, can oftentimes seal the game or with an uh, early Steven already. Yep. Um, and it's a case of what can Sai find? He s already knows. He probably, again, at this point of the day, most players well, on this kind of record have wandered around the tables a little bit if they've had time. Just to kind of get an eye on what everyone around them is playing. Yeah. Because you might not play them now, but you might hit them in top cut if you make it. So it's worth knowing. Yeah. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if both players had a vague idea of what everyone's playing. I guess. It's, it's a not a big tournament, so they probably have the opportunity to see most of their opponents uh, play, see them play already. Yeah, so... Double Jorachi and a Zapdos, nice. Yes. Um, to talk a little about the matchup, like usually, of course, this is favored for Mill, no one would dispute that. But however, it's not as favored as you might think, at least in practice, it can turn out um, pretty close. For example, Nico Alabas against Alessandro Camascoli, being like one of mm -hmm. the um, top Zapdos players in Europe and probably the top Mill player in Europe have faced off against each other like three tournaments in a row yeah and like those games were always very um like i think nico lost mo all of them <laughs> but they were always very close i think twice nico said that he only uh, misplayed and lost sure. because of that and yeah last regional they faced off in the finals which alessandro took into very close games which nico always took to the last prize and he made an unfortunate mis misplay once again that maybe cost him the game. It's not like he would have won if he did it different. Yeah, but sure. But it sealed the game for um, Alessandro. Yeah, it's it's weird because Stoll normally tries to get very quickly into a point where you just can't do anything. Is that exactly. possible? Because it's so good at finding part Because like it needs to find stuff every turn anyway. Like that's what yes. it's used to doing. It's actually quite hard to disrupt it. And one important thing um, to mention is that Adrian doesn't play the Lucarium uh, Metal which we see in many... Um but he's playing two different tag teams. Yes. So he's playing the Magic Cup and Wayload as just a big boy uh, to sit there and soak up as much damage as physically possible to be before being healed. Also, um, kind of interesting because there's no grass right now. Like, the 300 is not going anywhere. Yeah. But he's also playing a copy of the uh, Buzzwell Feromosa, a Feromosa and Buzzwell tag team GX as well. Yeah, the Wylord might actually be interesting by uh, because um, Sai is playing his own bus with Feromosa. So with like Beast Energy and yeah. Force Band, he can hit quite a lot of damage onto those um, Wylords. So those might not be the best cards for Adrian. And yeah. But Sai had a good setup there. Drew a lot of cards, played exactly. a lot of cards. Hooper. Um, uh, not looking like a great start for Adrian because it's just straight into a fan club and no immediate yeah, turn with I Stevens. Mean, his one of fan club is, of course, pretty nice for him. First thing he wants to do is get some... Pokemon into play. He also does not play Regigigas. So mm. those Hoopa has a um, wall of um, choice. Doesn't have anything else. Usually uh, Regigigas with Ancient Crystal. Well, he also has two Stack Attacker, which yeah, is very okay. much his wall of Except choice. Yeah, that too. Um, but no, he's he's clearly gone for the... Look, in most matchups, by just getting Hoopas in the way, that's enough. There's enough decks that just don't really have solid outs to yes, Hooper. Yes, indeed. Um, that's actually why we saw th uh, in the uh, list that won uh, Madison uh, in that uh, well no in the one that came second the Az Azul's list um, they were playing a copy of Arcanine f both because it beat Hooper but also dodged Vileplume uh, yeah. and gave them a way of beating both of those matchups Zapdos however in a decent position to um, uh, in a decent position to two shot um, Hooper because only needs one modifier for it and one switch so like you deal 80 and then you do 10 plus electro yeah. power for the knockout so um, dealing with Hooper is not too hard for size Zapdos. 300 is a little bit more difficult though. Yeah, that tr that's true for sure. Um, you know, he has no way of kind of, he, you know, he only has the electric powers and he has two choice bands as well, but he, that would be all of them and he would still wouldn't get close. <laughs> yeah, and um, the different thi an interesting thing is um, in when I watched Nico versus Alessandro, it always was that um, Nico tried to um, um, put down his own triumph punishment and his Tapu Koko prison, uh, his Tapu Koko GX and try to knock it out himself to activate his Sledgehammer so he could take easy one shots on the um, Regigigas and when he was trying to use um, Mar Shadow to, to prevent um, Alessandro from preventing uh -huh. him from doing <laughs> it. And yeah. It's it it when you get to the point of having to prevent the prevention, exactly. it's probably gone too far. <laughs> and it becomes a big deal. But uh, yeah. 
The important thing was that um, um, the main wall of Alessandro was Regigigas of Ancient Crystal, which Adrian doesn't play, so like dealing with those Hoopers is much easier for Sai than dealing with Regigigas Ancient Crystal. Um, he also has switch, he has an energy. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's not how switch works. Switch does not Ooh. discard. Oh, he even has. Ooh, going for double. And yes. Sai going for the aggressive option here, using two electro powers to um, to knock out a Hooper. Pro trying to disrupt Adrian's board before he gets the Glot going, but there we see the Steven's oh, advice. Oh. So he will be relatively safe. It's more or less at this point. Yes. The game gets locked up. Yeah. Or I if if he's able to make the um, you know, it's it, it's it's a big, uh, it's a lot of choice. It's any of exactly. three of your cards, <laughs> and it means that your deck building process before you go has to be spot on, mm -hmm. because you need all of them to be something you might want. Yes. And here we're not seeing things like the packages that we saw earlier on in Xander's thing of attacker counter gain counter energy to kind of remove energy by just t knock taking knockouts. Here it's instead more of a straight up just find things that will just stop you from taking knockouts. Exactly, and Sai looking um, for what to do. He has an escape rope, I think, in his hand. Or, I don't know. And he has Faulkner for sure. So he's thinking about how to take a knockout on this Hooper. But yeah, this Steven hurt a lot because, of course, Adrian was able to take two cards and another Steven, and he will be able to do the ne same thing next turn. And this way, get access to all cards he wants and build up a perfect board, which Sai can't disrupt because he doesn't play Mars Shadow let with Let Loose. So yeah, this <coughs> definitely painful thing for Sai. And he now trying to figure out. He already has one Electro Power, so. Yep. But he also has the. Uh, he doesn't have a discarded Guzma, which means that if Adrian can stick something <laughs> active at some point, yes, <coughs> going to be kind of costly. But now, he, he he has a decent board state, right? Like, it's already looking in a position where he, he has a lot of stuff he needs. It's whether Sai knows, like, in this matchup, going into the uh Oh, he prism. actually does play Let Loose, so I missed it on his list. Uh, I don't see... Oh, yeah. it's at the top. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He, he used the printed out list and, like, he... Um, he extended up, yeah, down. exactly. He wrote his down his Pokemon below, like Pokemon and stuff, and then afterwards he also changed, probably changed something. I and was like yeah, yeah, I yeah, suspect that Marshadow yes. was a late addition. <laughs> yes, uh, because it's written like above the other Pokemon and uh, above like the Pokemon stuff, so it's really hard to see. But yeah, he is playing Marshadow. Of course, being a huge card here. No, really he's playing Cat again. Maybe he's also playing Cat again. <laughs> but the, but the Marshadow early. You have to do it as soon as they start ste get start that Stevens chain because now you they've already played one, so there's only three more in the deck anyway. <coughs> but you really do need to kind of get that disruption going. Yeah, exactly. He wants to use them as soon as possible. Um, he doesn't want Adrian to build up a strong board. He just wants to use Machado early on, hope that Adrian more or less breaks of it, and that he can take his prizes quickly. Uh, meanwhile. And the perfect thing for him, <laughs> of, of course, would be to get Adrian out of bench Pokemon. Yeah, that is that is a, a, a more likely win condition, I think, than trying to run through six <laughs> prizes. Yeah, it is. Um, especially when one of those, uh, three of those prizes st are stuck to a 300 HP fish. Um, but so yeah, like, Basmosa. Um, attach, retreat. The GX attack of Basmosa, the base damage is 40, right? So it's 40 and it takes one additional prize. So with Choice Band and Beast Energy, mm. that hits for 200 onto a Waylord, mm. which is a lot, and it would take four prizes. So that yeah. would be an amazing thing if Sai would be able to Yeah, Sai's so probably going to actively try and hide that Feromosa yes. until he knows he can get the win from it. Exactly. It's, it's one of those things of, as soon as your opponent knows that's there, it's lost. <laughs> it's completely lost its value. Um, but this turn, like, if he hits, he's going to hit fairly hard now. Yes, he hits for 110. He uses the Marshadow, so this gives him a realistic chance of Adrienne like not drawing great things. And then if he then finds the Beast Energy, I mean, we're asking for a lot from four cards, Beast Energy plus uh, the Feromosa, but if he hits it, he's able to start, you know, take three prize cards very quickly and leave him with only a Hooper on the bench. Yeah, also like Adrienne only has so many um, cards he could draw out of it, he only plays two builds analysis, interestingly. He plays four Poker Gear 4, 
And he plays Frosty instead of Ice. He's also playing the Lance, which means he can Dragonite. <laughs> yes, true. To then set up other options later on. Yeah. Oh, he just drew and it. Oh, he just, yeah, drew, he it. just drew a Steven. <laughs> I mean, s sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, he, sometimes, I, sometimes <laughs> I get let loose and I'm sat there going, oh, I, I forgot these cards were in my deck. These are like the, the exact cards <laughs> I didn't need right now. And sometimes that happens. <laughs> yes. So, Adrian getting the, Steven, uh, the Steven's resolve right away after size si um, let loose. Searching uh, for three cards and exactly. ending your turn. Really not a problem when you're in no particular hurry to do anything other than search for your cards. Um. Yeah, with Steven Resolve being the card that it's the core of the mill deck. And yeah, Adrian having, ex Adrian having access to this is really crucial for him. Now he can just like plan out, map out his game, execute it perfectly so that Sai can't draw all remaining prizes and like the thing that would be amazing for Sai here would be um, if he could <laughs> pull off a crazy buff will turn right now, it would probably see the game for him, but it looks pretty bad. I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see any supporter there. He can draw, oh, and he just attacks 440. And I guess yes. with, with how slow that turn was, Adrian's probably just going to go pass or just Stevens, because yeah. you know, like, you're in no rush to heal it, because... Yeah, he but he has <laughs> <a good> motion. <laughs> Making sure, making sure for nothing funny from Sai. I've just down. noticed how tiny Waylord's eye is in that uh, <laughs> scan. It's so small. <laughs> it is, it is. Um, but yeah, the max potion, meaning that Sai's last two t uh, turns of attacking have exactly. come to nothing. Uh, also, and Basmosa no, no, nowhere near being a threat now. And... Yeah, he's going to have to find at least two attacks to get through the the Magic Carp and Waylord GX. Yeah. Um, but now we see, I think that's the first, that's the fighting stack attacker that we saw earlier on. Yes. He's uh, thinking about what to take. Probably. <laughs> I think it was the Stevens is one of them. Expecting. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, you know, a prize to go ad eventually. Um <coughs> yeah, like at this point, there's not too much. Uh, um, Sai can be threatening anymore. He can use his Tapu Koko Prism Star and <laughs> Tapu Koko GX to um, get big damage going onto the Red Cup Waylord. Then he could take it afterwards with a Basmosa, and he still has two electric power. Yeah, he still has two electric power and at least a choice band, to right? Take, uh, yeah, one choice band. So. Well, actually, he only has uh, one electric power in the deck because the other one is prized right now. Yeah, oh, it's true. So it's actually yeah, not well likely. But with the Volkner, you know, you can basically go and grab the stuff. Yeah. But yeah, the crucial thing is that he still has the resources he needs to take at least one prize on a Hooper. And taking out this Waylord would be extremely hard with Zapdos because it's not only hard to keep attacking because you always have to switch to attack and you on he only has so many switch cards. He doesn't have the Aura GX to have to retreat. Yeah. And so like um, Adrian only needs to heal his Magic Cup Wildot every like third turn and he can basically guarantee that with um, oh uh, with uh, Lusamine and Acerola. Yeah. I mean and at yeah. that point he needs doesn't need any extra resources to keep yeah. uh, to looping. Also here Sai cannot attack because he um, already retreated this turn to get the Jirachi active. And yeah, Adrian not needing to do anything. Sai hasn't attacked. Sai hasn't, um, yeah, hasn't disrupted him. He hasn't attacked. He hasn't put energy into play. So the Lusamine, a Plumeria, and a Stack Attacker uh, get grabbed. Yes. So he's just developing his hand and board further. Yep. I, it's no. It's interesting to know he's not playing the Unknown Hand. Um. So he his his wing condition is just Mill. He yeah. hasn't got another option. Probably one of the players that didn't expect too many um, other mill decks. Like <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Um, it's always a risk because yeah. you know yeah. if you if as a player you decide that mill is going to be in a good space for the tournament, y you then had to go. Uh, how many other people have made that yes. call? We have seen a uh, Sander playing unknown hand, so he will, for example, have an advantage against Adrian, a pretty big one actually. If they were to face in um, top eight. Sander being 5 for 1, so he's already locked mm -hmm. for 
uh, for Top Card as well as Bert Walters. So if you guys are looking uh, forward to seeing those guys again, they will be in Top 8 tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Storm Mirror, uh, as Andy said earlier on, basically comes down to the question of, hey, do you, uh, do you, do you play Unknown Hand? Yeah, I, oh, oh, I don't. <laughs> uh, thanks. We'll just go take a break. <laughs> um, yeah, but here we see Sai attaching energy to Zapdos. This turn he will be able to retreat and do some damage onto the Waylord. But of course, Adrian can just wait a turn and then heal it. Very much kind of chip damage that... Yeah. Th the thing is, is that Sai needs to almost kind of do this in two steps of make it look kind of innocent. Mm -hmm. You know, like yes. you, you kind of want to just kind of poke it a little bit to go, right, it's not threatening. I'm not going to destroy you immediately. Uh, it's I don't have a KO next turn. It just has to be just enough to kind of set it up without pushing over the range. Yeah. If you ask me, Adrian doesn't really... Um, uh, Adrian probably wants to ace a roller with Waylord to just have Hoopas left in play yeah. because there's no re not really any way for Sai to go through um, s through five more Hooper. Mm. And so he just wants to give us hard to take non X prizes and le let Sai burn through all of his switching cards, all of his electro powers. He also has Beast Energy, so he could use Buzzwell Beast Energy to take a knockout on um, Hooper, but. Adrian already has Plumeria in his hand to yep. remove Beast Energy once that might happen. Yep. Um, and yeah, here we see Beast. So he has now revealed it as well as part of an ultra search um, to Adrian. So Adrian now knows that is a thing he needs yes. to consider. Um, you know, that Plumeria he took last turn may have been just to try and discard the energy off the Zapdos. That's kind of pointless now because there's already mm -hmm. two energy there. Um, no, but the other card is a golden choice, man, I believe. So it's only one energy. It all looks very yellow. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, so I um, has Rupas Moza and Beast Energy in hand, thinking about if he wants to put it down. He he's probably thinking that um, if he attacks with Basmosa, he doesn't need ad as much um, to keep attacking. But of course, ad that puts Adrian in a position where he can just ace the roller, remove that Magic Cup Waylord. Um, from play, and then there are those Hoopers which can't be touched by um, the Bus Mosa. Yeah, he's going to commit to it. Right, yeah, but he's opting to use the Rainbow Energy, valuing. Um, Holding his Beast Energy for later. Mm -hmm. Again, it's the same kind of thing if you need to set, it, ju set the numbers up and then establish that that's what you're looking for without having to overextend by throwing into it. And yeah, he's just attacking with Jet Punch. Um, doing 60 damage to the active, and Hoopa cannot be touched by your opponent's yep. Pokemon GX, so Hoopa doesn't get any damage. Yep, it doesn't just have to be in the active position, it's not one of those uh, abilities that only exists there. Um, with the double attachment now to the Feromosa, it becomes maybe size, maybe going, well, can I find a way of taking a KO via Elegant Bolt if I have to? Mm -hmm. um, if I can find a Yeah, Elegant Bolt would be pretty good for him, but. Uh, Adrian now has the option uh, if he wants to remove uh, Rainbow Energy, preventing this um, elegant soul, or if he wants to ace roller his uh, Waylord to get it out of the game. Yep. Uh, and yeah, that's <laughs> what he's doing. So now this uh, Bus Mosa is more or less useless in the active, very painful for Sai. He's certainly not happy about this. It's also quite a, a commitment of resources yes. um, into it because that's his rainbow he's not playing that many but also this that's an e just a dead energy and like and with the an energy already on Jorachi and there's already one on Zapdos he, like that's what uh, Adrian will eventually do is get these energy all into awkward places exactly stick something active and go right you, you run out of Guzman before I do because I have Lusamine and yeah and Sai picking up an Electro Power, so if he does 80 here, he could use it next turn to take a knockout on the Hoopa. And yeah, so it's a pretty nice card. Uh, alternatively, he can just do like the turn afterwards of Adrian Heals, which is rather likely. Um, Sai can just do 10 again and threaten a knockout the next turn with just a switch. So that's a nice card to not waste too many resources. Yep. But uh, yeah, Sai just opts to has a turn. Yeah, here interesting. He had no he had no way of coming into But uh, he has a skateboard on the Jirachi. He used Guzma so he could yeah. have just retreated. Yeah. So and interesting choice. He might be waiting for another Electro Power, but 
But yeah, but he's not, that's not going to come. But yeah, it's in his prizes, so uh, he probably didn't check for that. As um, trainers aren't the most popular cards to be checked for, but that might hurt him because <laughs> he yeah, in the long run, that's basically yeah. uh, that's an eighty miss damage yeah, exactly. minimum. Um, yeah, and th this <laughs> this electro power, he can wait a very long time for it. It will never come. Um, but it's also a case of take. Sometimes people have the thing of, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't attack because then they just don't use the, the, the like, th they'll have the max potion anyway, it's pointless. But then you kind of need to make them use their resources. The only way you'll ever beat these kind of mill decks is making exactly. them run out of their uh, heal and yeah, their by, by missing those turns where you can attack, you just give Adrian um, the possibility to use Lusamine and recover healing exactly. cards. Or, you know, like, uh, it means, and then it, it just saves his max potion for another turn exactly, further yeah. down the line anyway. So now, yeah, so now Adrian just uh, Adrian just goes, cool, I'm just going to Gladian, because you didn't yeah. do anything. Yeah, given enough time, those um, Stalex will never run out of resources. Because this Lusamine chain, of course, is access to unlimited resources. And yeah, Adrian just using a Gladian. I think he picked a Guzma out of his prizes. I'm not 100% sure, though. Um... Guzma, pretty strong card because it can drain Ava. Yeah, there was a Guzma in his prize, it's not there anymore. So next turn he can Guzma, for example, with Zapdos active, so it can't, so it doesn't get active anymore. Or he can Guzma up the Marshadow. Gonna just to prevent Sai from doing um, much more damage with my hand. So we see a Stellar Wish. Yep, straight away. Blower, we saw a rainbow, but neither of those are cards that matter at all in this kind of matchup. Indeed, just takes the field blow just yes. to just to get it out of the deck. You may as well yeah. take something here. It's basically a free draw. Exactly uh, means you're not going to draw into it in a later turn when you could just top deck the answer you need instead. So interesting to see if he decides to attack this turn. And yeah, he's. Choosing a rescue stretcher, so yeah, he's going for Buzzwool. He has the beast energy, so he can take a one shot here, and mm -hmm. that's what he's going for. Uh, but yeah, but it's a yep. knockout. <laughs> that was just a. It's like, oh yeah, a surprisingly large amount of damage. Mm -hmm. And that leaves Adrian with only one Pokemon in play, so he probably wants to put down some more. He has Stucker Tucker in his hand already. But he also had Surge that he took way back. Yes. Which now means that now. He oh, can just and kind he of has the lance. <laughs> yep, the Lysander. Th so the lance comes in. Gonna get him two getting of these him. Dragonites out of the deck. Um, a card that hasn't seen play whatsoever. Yes. Well, <laughs> two cards that haven't seen play whatsoever, both the Dragonite and the lance. Uh, the lance resin star letting you search your deck for two Dragonite Pokemon and put them onto your bench. And the Dragonite's letting you search for the... Uh, for a support card every turn. Yes, and the Dragonite now giving him access to um, thanks to Surge and Plumeria. Uh, thanks to Surge and Dragonite, he now has access to a Plumeria, so he can remove the Beast Energy this turn. He's also looking for another Surge, probably for next turn. He can technically play it this turn, but that <laughs> would be just a wasted spot. But I mean, yeah. if you want to, you can play free Lieutenant Surge in one turn. Yeah, they don't stack. It specifically says you yes, can exactly. play three. In total, yeah. not uh, you can play two more. If you just want to style on your opponent, you can play free land, uh, uh, free search for whatever reason. But he's just going for the plumeria, removing this beast energy. So one, so another one of size crucial threats are gone. And he have a beast plumeria. energy and the electro powers of yep. beast energy, electro powers, and switching cards are more basically the most crucial resources in size deck. Also. Um, Noteworthy is that he doesn't have a bench space anymore, so he cannot use Tapu Koko um, GX, which would be a good attacker to take out those uh, Dragon Knights. Yeah, he's he's really kind of pushed to a point where his board is committed and is awkward. That's kind of what Stall yes. aims to do. It's not just trying to run you out of resources. It's going to like say, look, you're going to have to make plays that aren't nice. Indeed. However, he still has a couple of Rainbow Energies left. Yeah, so he's still not entirely out of attacking options here. Yeah, and with Rainbow Energies, um, Buswell can at least two-shot Hooper. So, that's at least something. Yeah, and the Energy's going to stick because there's only uh, one yeah. Farber, one Plumerian. We've seen both now, I and think. Two-shot, two shot, however, isn't too much because um, if Stall wants, if a Stall player wants, he can just um, use Acerola every second turn. So, 
if you have yeah. no other option than two shots, you will event you will not accomplish anything yep. basically. So the Lusamine is Lusamine Plumeria. Just trying to start running out him out of energy now because and, yeah. the Coco there's no space for the Coco Prism. He's using already used it. And he's using his Dragonite to get some more cards. I mean it seems good when it works. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I'm just glad that there's a Dragonite. It's my favourite Pokemon. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just quite glad that it's sort of... Yeah. I'm not going to say it's competitively viable. I'm not going to go that far. But it's it's in a win and in. Yeah, it's a decent card in those uh, stall decks. You can play it like Adrian does with um, Lance, and we've seen other stall decks. Yeah, with like 101. Yeah, exactly. 101, because they run a Viplum Ladder in any way, yep. so they have Rare Candy, so they can just include it. And the Steven just gives you access to those cards. Yep. Yeah, it's Steven means that you can run these weird counts of lines yeah, exactly. and, and text because you just go and pick them out of your deck whenever you need them. And yeah, the Psy just keeps passing, so Adrienne has time to um, s use this Lusamine cycle to recover some resources, because like, Psy isn't doing anything that's threatening it's to double Adrian. bills. Double bills. <laughs> um, which is Basically two more cards each out of his deck. Yeah. He doesn't He doesn't play Unknown Hand, right? So no, this is this is the thing, is that like, that, f that feels like a play... <laughs> At this point, if you were playing Unknown Hand, you'd be very happy because your opponents clearly can't do anything uh, to stop you. Um, you know, he's only playing the one beast energy and the four rainbow that t to let this buzz will do anything. You've already gone through a lot of it and through the Pume areas. There's we see one rainbow in hand, but and <laughs> yeah. at attaching it when you know they already have a Pume area because they took it earlier. Yeah. And we're at an interesting point in the game because um, it seems, to be honest, very, very unlikely that Sai wins this game. He only has taken two prizes and he's gone through so many resources already. And it looks very hard for him and there's like more than half of the times already up. So if Sai still wants to win this best of three, he would have had to concede this game at some point. Yeah. So um, alternatively, he's just playing out this game and then he's hoping to take a quick win, game two, and get a tie out of this to make top 16. So, I think now all of Adrian's uh, supporters are in his hand because <laughs> he just went, I'll just use one Dragonite. I'm going to style on you, just the one of these. Um. Yeah. <laughs> and he's recovering Lusamine and a Surge, preparing for potential strong turns later on. Yep. So he has a large hand so there. Exactly. Large hand, but I don't see energies in it and right, not I, a see, lot. I see precisely one oh rainbow yeah, yeah, which exactly. is kind of pointless attaching because yeah, it's yeah. just going to get knocked straight away yeah we know that Adrian has Faber in his hand so you need at least two rainbow to make it worth using yep so with the surge and the lusamine basically means you can surge lusamine one of the support the support you took off back back from lusamine uh, and a lusamine and yeah uh, um, ready for the next turn and yeah yeah he receives a scoop from Sai, deciding that ah, it's still 20 minutes left. Yeah, I might yes. still be able to yes, nix this. Exactly. Like at least, like, at least that now it's like a one-one is yes. very feasible. If say, a Adrian starts a Hooper, he goes Buzzwall, uh, Beast Energy. Exactly. Let's go. Yeah, having Buzzwall, Beast Energy, and the Let Loose Marshadow in the same turn is of course a, f a very desirable thing for Sai because that way he's likely to take at least uh, two Monokos with it. Yeah. Because it's very hard for uh, Mill to have the response right away. He only plays like one, two plu Plumeria, one, two Faba, so... Yeah, I think it's one of each, I think, in his list. Yeah, not um, a lot of... There's not actually not a lot of, lot of like energy yeah. disruption. There's just a yeah, lot of exactly. stuff to be in the way. Yeah. He's gone more for the... You're just not going to take your prize cards exactly. because they're We've too big. We've seen the tendency in those stall decks to go a little more aggressive, like not focus too much on... Um, on energy disruption, just walling against Zapdos decks mm -hmm. like Zapdos or stuff like that, uh, or just taking crucial knockouts against. Well, deck, this like is I think a thing that we need to start. Like, there's almost a distinction to be made there of like true mill style yeah. stall, it's and <laughs> then like what like because the mel the Lucario Mel Metal GX was actually more of just really heavy offense, like it's just really bulky attacking stuff. Yeah. The Gardevoir, G uh, Sylveon Gardevoir tag team as well hasn't seen much play, but it falls into the same category of just yes, true, just tanking hits and then taking doing big damage back as so opposed to being a true mill deck and let's see um it doesn't look like um sai has a jirachi so this is um not not a great opening for him i guess 
Um, I uh, saw Mew, I think. I saw Top Coco Prism Star. I saw Zapdos. And yeah, the yep. prizes need to go on the yeah. prize cap. And also, he needs six prizes, not just four. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's getting that fixed. We see nothing very relevant for Adrian, and even if there was something relevant, he could just use his Gladian to get the cards out of there. Gladian's, uh, Gladian becomes basically a search your card, uh, mm. your deck for a card kind of uh, support yeah. for them. And Sai opens with a Tapu Koko Prism Star, and he has a Nest Ball. Checking his deck, <laughs> checking his deck for what is in there, but not taking too much of a look, which is, of course, a very reasonable decision. Knowing um, that you don't have yes, the time, really. Exactly. Like, knowing your resources is, of course, very important against Storm, because, like, uh, as we've seen um, in Game 1, he perhaps didn't check for all his Electro powers, and so he wasted one turn at, um, not attacking. And... Um, but, yeah, here, in this situation, time is a more, yeah. more important resource than uh, yep. information. Uh, well, again, so this whole resource management exactly. thing becomes... It's both your resource for your kind of card resources but time resources your energy resources it's kind of uh, there's an awful lot of like decisions to make we do now see the Macago um, basically now means that Sai will have access to all of yes. his trainers yes this is of course very nice to have especially against store where you want to have the right resources at the right time and you don't want to waste anything yep means you can do things like maybe sell a wish first see if you get a card you need and then put the use the Macago to put another one for you to draw next turn on yeah. top. Especially at this point, because you've seen Ad Adrian's probably not playing any hand disruption. Uh, yes. Not playing any shuffle. And, and like, draw. interesting thing is that Sai opts to play this Macago, and he's doing quite well here, being in the win and in situation. Of course, facing an unfortunate matchup now, but he did very well so far. And the Macago over the usual Zap Striker is, of course, an interesting choice. Well, I think it's more card quality than quantity exactly, is what it exactly. turns into. I, it makes sense to me because like, um, I've heard from players um, arguments like, I don't want to use Zap Striker because I want to have, I want to conserve my resources, sure. I want to have big hands, build them with multiple stellar wishes and lily, so I have, so I can plan my next turns. And this is exactly what um, Size Macargo is yeah. making uh, possible for him. Instead of just throwing away during random cards, he wants specific cards and he wants to plan his turns in advance. Yeah, it means that he can kind of, you know, either get a card for that turn if he really needs it exactly. by using it through the combination, if it's a trainer, or if it's any other card, he can just wait one turn, draw it, and yes. normally against all one turn to wait is not yeah. likely to cause you a problem. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. Um, I guess with some striker originally was attack against Zorak. Because um, they wanted to have make sure, and that's why they opted for the striker over Macargo, like I mean Robin and Bird mm. in uh, at the Oceania International, because they wanted to make sure that they um, have an option to draw out of Judge right away and don't want to wait a turn. Yep. And yeah, here we see Adrian getting a couple of Pokemon into play. No Hoopers yet, but. Um, actually, White Kirim and Buzzwall are better walls than <laughs> Hooper. And I mean, they open the p possibility for uh, Tapu Koko GX, of course, which can one-shot them. But they uh, have 130 HP, so it kind of forces Sai into um, yep. investing resources into powering up Tapu Koko. And then, and then getting it knocked out. Exactly. And, and we saw it last time. Uh, yeah, like Stack Attack is surprisingly easy to knock out. Uh, you get to get knock out with, but Buzzball yeah. is also good. Um, yeah, also, or he can just like uh, remove stuff like the Waylord from play and only put down Hoopers, and then there are lots of resources stuck on this one type of Coco. Yep. GX, which doesn't do much. Yeah, there's a, there's so a lot yeah. of different options for kind of and forcing Side to commit to plays that. And yeah, there we saw the plan. And there we saw the star of Adrian's deck, the Stevens Resolve, getting him fr three cards, which he wants. And this means that he's already. <coughs> ready to have everything he needs. Yeah, I can see at least a I think I see a Dragonite. <laughs> <Or is it laughs> <laughs> but in his hand as well. Um. Yeah, I guess what Sai wants to do is um, use his Macago to um, get his Tapu Koko GX ready and then use Marshadow and attack with Tapu Koko as long as there's no Hoopa in play yet. Yeah, the other thing is how much does attack does uh, the Prism Star do? 120. 120. Uh, but it would need free energy, so it's very hard to power. Yeah, up. sure. Um, but 
Yeah, 120 is a relevant number against the Hoopers, but not so much against the rest yes, of the exactly. uh, right stuff. QM, the basketball. Um, having a sky high class from um, Tapu Koko GX would be the perfect number to take the knockout on those. And, like, I mean, of course, Sai can just attack with Zap just like he usually does. But the issue is that, yeah, those Zap does have a hard time to keep attacking. Yeah, that would do yeah. it. Yeah, uh, this would be a knockout. <laughs> <laughs> but. I believe, but that's th th that's two powers gone straight away yes. for yes. a single prize. And, ooh, and Adrian has Lance Prism Star in hand, so so we're gonna go see. Yes, so this Lance. Um, so it goes Surge, yeah. Lance, Dragonite, exactly. something from the Dragonite. And this is devastating for Sai because having those Dragonites in play will of course ensure Adrian that he will always draw out of uh, let loose. Yep. Yeah, it's now a case of no matter what you do, exactly. Andrew oh yeah. always has an out, unless you want to go after. A, I think it's a 160 HP uh, Dragonite, which doesn't yeah. really feel like a good use of, uh, of your resources. Um, so we've just been told that after this last round, we will have um, a couple more games for you, even though this is the last round of Masters today. Yes. Uh, we have uh, the finals for the Junior and the Seniors divisions coming up. Yes. Uh, which so is always nice to kind of show yeah, a bit of spotlight I mean on these guys. Those guys are uh, more... I mean, you can argue that at least seeing us have a future of the game. Yeah. They will age up, they will become yeah, a yeah, new yeah. master. I mean, we saw... We saw, yeah. we uh, saw Magnus Pedersen earlier on yeah. doing quite well against the our own Masters World Champion, being the Seniors World Champion. Yeah. They, you know, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how yes. that goes for them. Yeah. Uh, but they'll, they'll be on after this game. Yeah, so... Of course, always very nice that we can compensate for only having seven rounds masters and in showing you guys. Yep, we'll still get yeah, we'll still get nine rounds worth of uh, content <laughs> um, for you guys. Yes. Uh, we are here. <laughs> we we want to push this content out. Um, but so and just yeah, and Adrian just removed used Plumeria to remove yep. energy of the Zapdos, deciding to target those resources right away. But this might hurt. This might. Uh, not necessarily hard, but it might not be too great because the Tapu Koko Prison Stars, of course, able to get those energies back. And what Sai, Sai probably wants to save his Marshadow for a turn in which he can use, and which he can take a knockout on the Dragonite as well. But and yeah, he still has the bench space to do it. He could Guzma the Dragonite, use Electro Power, Marsh uh, and Marshadow, and take a knockout there. Yeah, because so otherwise, Adrian would just use Dragonite for Steven's resolve yep. right away, and it would be back to the same situation. Yeah, you got to find I if you're going to play that Marshadow, it has to be whilst also dealing with Dragonite. Otherwise, mm. yeah, you're otherwise not doing anything. Yeah, the Marshadow is the crucial card for Sai, and if if he uses why Dragonite is on board, it would be pointless. I mean, it buys him a turn because. It's realistically just going to be uh, Dragonite, Stevens, and that's the end. So it kind of gets a turn, but you'd much rather get you a lot more than that. You want him to, you want Adrian to start having to draw through his deck to uh, to find them, as awesome. opposed to just picking them back out again. Yeah. Also, the nice thing about using both of using Let Loose and Tapu Koko GX in the same turn would be that he could put up continuous pressure afterward, assuming that no Hooper come down. Yes, uh, but we see and a surge from the Dragonite. Yes, I think we're gonna see. And a Steven right away. Adrian probably would like to put down Hoopa eventually, just to have this um, potential to have immunity to um, a non to uh, his opponent's GX. But instead, he's going for Stakataka, uh, counter energy and counter gains. So he might want to target down um, either the Mechago or the Tapu Koko Prism Star. Well, there's also the chance that because he hasn't, like, I don't think Sai has seen them yet, it might be a case of Sai might use Mechago. Oh. Stack it <laughs> and then get. <laughs> That's true. And then just kind of mill whatever Sai was looking for, yeah. which would be, I think, heartbreaking if it was Sai, if that would have happened to you. Um, we saw it earlier on the Wall of Stone. Um, n is not currently active, but the stack attacker goes from 120 HP to 200. Here we see Sai has Guzma, he has ele Electro Power. So he's probably thinking about if he wants to try to get the knockout on Dragonite plus ma let loose this turn. It's and it's probably a good idea because we know that Adrian could prevent it next turn 
in yep. taking out the oh. crucial piece. But no, the he's just going for the Waylord, probably deciding to, probably just wants to get his Jirachi active to build up his board. F uh, <laughs> and <laughs> that very nearly a search instead of the. Uh, yeah. Thing at the just looking at the top five. Yeah, Adrian not caring too much. Saying yeah, sure it's fine. Probably didn't see a card anyways. Um, it's not like it mattered because you can just look through a deck right away afterwards. Yeah, yeah, it basically means that like it's fine. You can have a cargo anyway. Yeah. And now he's using smooth over. And he looks to be going for beast energy. Interesting choice. Yeah. Now that might be very crucial because if Adrian attacks with Staccata Kanao and flips heads. He can mill this beast and energy, getting rid of one of the most important resources in size uh. deck and taking a knockout on this crucial Mechago or the Tapu Koko Prism star. Yeah, that would that would be huge. Um, yeah, he's just passing. So, does yeah. he have a way of getting it active? Yeah, he, he has, has a Guzma? Yeah, he has a Dragonite to search out the Guzma. I think he already has So, what, you go for the yeah. knockout on the Mechago here, break that engine up? Yeah, either that or the Tapu Koko both make sense. Um, but going for Ace of Roller, so I think he already has the Guzma in hand. Yeah, yeah, he has a Guzma in hand, and he's just taking the Ace of Roller to thin his deck a bit. So, Stack Attacker, yes. Counter Energy, Counter Gain, and with <laughs> Guzma. Sai's just gonna <laughs> go, oh, yikes. And um, now Adrian is like, oh, yeah, okay. He's yeah, the Coco's also the good. It, it makes sense. It makes enough sense. Um, and he needs at least one heads. <laughs> um, if he flips tails on the first one, that's gonna be. And I it think tails, it's, yeah, it's, it's a tail, right? Otherwise, he would have to flip again. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like just about dodged that one. Um, and obviously, now the stack attack is no longer active um, because yes. it's taken a prize card. Um, so, there is that beast energy, which just about m made it through that turn. Um, with the Jirachi active again, the cargo is still available for Sai as well. So, he will have access to basically anything he wants. Plus, he also has, I think, a Lily and from last yes. turn, so he can draw into other cards if he really needs energy and things. But the question is, what does he want? With that Tapu Koko Prism Star gone, he has no easy way to um, power up his um, his Tapu Koko GX anymore. And it so also means energies that are gone stay gone. Yes. Also, uh, the Dragonite will probably be not... <laughs> it, it will probably not be possible to take out the Dragonite, at least not in one hit. Would you like to take a look in the bottom left-hand corner of Stack Attacker and have a look at what type it's weak to? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's weak to grass. <laughs> so I, uh, I was not expecting that. So it now means that the Feromosa can come in and take the knockout with Jet Punch. Yes. Or with um, Beast Game GX to take... More uh, prize cards. Yeah, exactly, to take an additional prize card. And here, yeah, so he's getting the escape bot, so we, he will have a knockout. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would definitely expect beast game here because. I mean, why not, right? Like you yeah. need to, you need to start taking these prizes. Exactly. He can't t get much more value out of it. So yeah, this tails flip <laughs> on the Starkataka being quite important. Very big. But Adrian having um, his Dragonite will probably be able to search out Faba, to or Plum Faba or Plumeria to uh, remove the energy. Get rid of this threat right away. Yeah, you can see it's yeah. really considering it. And oh. thinking about it, not sure what to do. I mean, this if he doesn't do it now, I don't know if he get necessarily yeah. gets another opportunity. I, yeah. Because it, Adrian probably just, yeah, he just goes for it now. Yeah. Because uh, Adrian probably has a way of removing that beast energy exactly. in hand. So taking two prize cards with Beast Game GX. And yeah, now it's on Adrian. He definitely and definitely wants to remove his energy this turn. Looking for his options. Yep. And he's taking a Lusamine. Yep, because I think he has access to Surge. Yes. Lusamine, Plumeria. All good. Get rid of that beast energy. You can you can leave that big chunky retreat up front. It's not doing anything. I'll find a Hooper in a minute. Yeah. Alternatively, he can just use Lusamine this turn, and. Oh yeah, oh, he, he had has the Faber right away anyways. Very nice. Just taking the loose, I mean, to thin his deck, get a better hand, and the beast energy gone, the Spas Moza more or less useless in the active. It can of course attack with Jet Punch for rainbow energy, but what do 30 damage really do? <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, this is, so this is the thing is that we were saying earlier on that sometimes you have to get the damage in when you can. But True. there are also situations where there's no, like, it doesn't change numbers significantly. 80 yeah. damage then means that you can set up KOs with things like your uh, Fermosa Buzzwell. Um, but 30 damage and 30 to, I guess, the Waylord is really neither here nor there. It's just kind of getting something done. But yeah. See, so it only has a few minutes left now. Only four minutes left in in, in the round, uh, um, yeah. which means so that it's it looks tough. very unlikely that he can find a way to take he these last three prize cards. Yeah, he has to take three prizes. His beast energy is gone. Multiple electro powers are gone. His Tapu Koko Prism star is gone. So he will have and that's of course for Dragonite on Adrian's part. Yeah. So Adrian wo probably won't break <laughs> anytime soon. Yeah. And Sai doesn't really have resources to put up a big attacker to take quick prizes. But still, for minutes, they also get extra turns, so... Yeah, sure. Um, There's still a possibility. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, really, we say it's, it's unlikely, but it means that if Sai can find somehow a way of taking a KO on the Waylord, that's it. That's all it is. <laughs> but it's finding that somehow at this point. Yeah. I think it would but have to be Guzma Electric Energy, Double Electro Power... And hope that Sai, uh, whilst also playing a let loose or something, you know, like uh, that's the point yeah. we're at. Yeah, um, but like when Adrian can just go Dragonite for Acerola. Yeah, stuff and like it's that. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we are back to the, to, to the current situation. So, not really much going on for Sai. This Dragonite really coming in key, giving Adrian e giving Adrian the possibility to pl to remove resources quite aggressively, and this he just plays a supporter every turn because. He gains card advantage through the Dragonite, so he doesn't have to invest, invest time into getting card advantage. It well basically means that instead of having to use his Stevens every turn, yeah. he used it for a few turns to build up a little bit of advantage, exactly. then went, right, great, we'll set it up the rest of it up, and from here on we can just kind of just maintain our lead, as opposed to having to, to kind of build on it. Exactly, and yeah, also keeping away this uh, let loose uh, possibility. So yeah, getting this... Dragonite right after Sai's first knockout. Really what's giving Sai a really hard time here. Yep. Just and yeah, Sai attaching an energy to the bust Moza. Probably hoping to uh, power up Elegant Soul. So I would... I guess you just do it. A little bit of... Yeah, I guess you just... I guess next turn he want he will wants to go for Rainbow Energy Marshadow. Yeah. And then hope that Adrian doesn't get an energy move and then he can yeah. get another well energy. I don't know if it Adrian already has um I if there's still a Plumeria oh in the deck. Yeah. So there's a Plumeria in the deck yeah, that he doesn't matter. He has Lieutenant Search and Lusamine, so he can get Plumeria here. Yep. Straight into the Plumeria and Plumeria Lusamine. And Faber. Is it a Faber? Yeah it is. Yes. Um yeah. Same backgrounds, but they're wearing uh, w Faber's wearing gloves, and right? And he's going for Steven. But yeah, having Faber and Plumeria in the deck is what's really crucial, because now um, even if Sai Marshadows, as he we've mentioned so many times yeah. before, this he Dragonite just, just makes. Just goes. That's yes. fine. I'll just go get him anyway. Yeah. Just. Uh, yeah. Go Dragonite. Faber. Remove energy. Pass. Yep. And it's a. Uh, it's an. It's a kind of now gets to be kind of confident that he just will always get rid of an energy whenever he needs to. He doesn't need yes. to do it every turn because most turns the it's not threatening to do much in, in, in particular. Um, but it's going to reach the point where it might, you know, y sometimes you'll need it to, to get more value and yeah, he doesn't need it. So, yeah, Sai not having done much with the last turn, just attaching energy, going for energy ultra ball here. Ultra Ball, being able to pick up the Marshadow, m maybe he will go for that, maybe he won't. Yeah, he well, he knows that the Plumeria is in hand. He wants to try and probably get rid of it. Because it also means if it, uh, Adrian wants to go for the Plumeria lines in particular, um, then it's going to be a case of he has to also discard two other cards from his hand. So I guess he can search the Plumeria, but he has to pitch two more resources to get there, which is not yeah. really ideal. 
Um, but as we get right in before five seconds before the uh, the, the time is being called, and yeah, um, that's time. So time on the round at this so point. So, so yeah, that's yeah. That means that yep. Sai has this turn and one more afterwards. Yep. <laughs> to take his last three prizes. And I just don't see a way of doing it. Yeah, me neither. I mean, he can go for Rainbow and Marshadow. Um. And but yeah, Adrian. So you're using a slightly different technique of counting turns here. <laughs> uh, he puts two dice out for each player and just takes the dice away um, oh. after you've taken your turn. Yeah. Adrian has everything to see to make sure that this game won't end. Yeah. I mean, he can just ace a roller. Like yeah, like exactly. There's no way Sai takes one hit knockouts here and he can just go Dragonite, ace a roller. Thanks. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he's going for the Marshadow. Using Let Loose. Um, being able to use Let Loose here. But. Yeah, I just I don't think. Uh, the thing is, it's, it's disrupting, but it's just not developing enough yes. to be able to take any prize cards this turn. And here he's thinking about the Rainbow Energy. I think you, you might as well here. Yeah, I mean. It's, it's You're hoping for a miracle, exactly. basically. You might <laughs> as well commit to everything. But yeah, this is like the only way he can win next turn. However, Adrian has his Dragon Knight. So like the only hope for Sai would be that Adrian draws like a Steven's Resolve, being super happy when he drew it out yeah, of and let loose plays it and and out of out of reflex just yeah, plays yeah, yeah. Muscle resolve. memory of oh yeah. I'm holding a Stevens, I should play oh a Stevens. Yeah, Steve. Let's go. Um but very unlikely to happen. Adrian last turn used the Lucerne, took his um, crucial energy remover back, showing that he knows how to win this game. And yeah, now he see the Dragonite. Pro Takes you to the active. Um. Oh, it's. I don't know. He it shouldn't doesn't matter for because <laughs> there here comes the Faber. <laughs> and then it's like. Yeah, it goes lost zone after yes. the Faber. Uh, which is not too relevant. There's not much in the way of recovering uh, your special yeah. energy. The but fixed va damage. It's just 30. And yeah. And pass. Because. Aaron just passes. And this is Sai's last turn. Yep. And there is no way for him to get enough damage in play. He's going to play the cards out anyway. Um, making the juniors who are straight after this uh, wait a little bit longer. <laughs> Um, yes. uh, 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 even though I'm sure they're extremely excited to be on stream. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Juniors are always very happy to be on stream. It's just like all masters always get the spotlight, yeah. and juniors and seniors just play there. And many people don't even realize once they are they are ready and who won. Yep, and that's it. So um, we do have a little bit of time for a, a winners interview if you'd like to. Yeah, and we can do that. Um, so we'll take a quick break, come back with a winners interview, and then we will get the juniors set up whilst that's happening. So we'll be back soon. Hi guys and welcome back for what is the round seven winners interview with your resident mill expert, Connor Hayward, that's me. Joined by our winner in that round, Adrian. Adrian. Hey. Dragonite. Yeah. It's my favorite, co it's my favorite Pokemon. Oh, it's so good. So good. Lands and into Dragonite and you get infinite like <laughs> supporters. Well, like well, so this is the thing we, we were saying. You you can't be Marshadowed anymore because yeah. they just what did they do? Yeah, the, it it is Marshadow proof. Uh, yeah, so it it has been the like the biggest uh, Achilles heel of uh, Mill. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get Marshadow. Oh, oh, this hand is useless, but uh, Dragonite can just fetch another supporter and you're good to go. Yeah, well, because there were like times there. It's just like cool, Marshadow. Yeah, I'm just gonna go get the father. It's fine. Like, I'm still gonna like deny yeah, all your energy. Yeah. It's it's a really like let you be more aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Um, but is there anything else in this list that you think that we didn't see in that matchup? Because obviously there was no need for the shrines and stuff in that matchup. But is there anything else that like you think your list? Because there's like the two stack attacker. Uh, yeah, two stack attacker. So we saw the the fighting type one earlier on. Yeah. Uh, today on stream as well, and we saw it in, in that match. Are they, are they the same one, or is one a promo? Uh, it is the same one. It's just like um, pre-release promo. <laughs> okay, because uh, I had no idea. Because <laughs> uh, I was looking at the promo number, I was like, I don't remember them. Um, <laughs> so it's t so it's the two copies. Is that like 
worked out well for you today? Where has it? Yeah, the thing is, uh, it's not only just an attacker. It, it is a really good wall. When they get on the tree prices or less, then it has 200 HP. And I can just cycle, cycle them, cycle them, and, yeah, uh, sure. and attack as well. Well, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess you go Acer Roller, Counter yeah. Gain, uh, yeah. Counter Energy. Do it again and just keep looping in that yeah. kind of path. That's pretty cool. Also, it can mill a few cards if you're lucky. <laughs> I mean, so what? You, so I d I d did you know that what his top card was? You, what he, what he drew off the thing where you flip the tails. Oh, I don't recall. It was a beast energy. Oh, what so, we so we were all just like something. Oh, but what if he hits the beast energy? That would be insane value. Yeah, yeah. And then you flip <laughs> the tails. We're like, oh well, we'll never know. Yeah. We'll never know. <laughs> um, but it was um, because we were saying that like the Macargo he was playing made him consistent. Yeah, yeah. But that left him open to the stack attacker just kind of <laughs> getting rid of good cards. Yeah, I thought I would get w good value if I actually hit heads because it is obviously a card he wants because exactly. he's yeah. Macar Macargo for it. Um, so how have the rest of your matchups gone today? Uh, today I have been playing against some f some uh, Richard charges mm -hmm. and my white Kurum has been uh, at least won me one game and get got me a tie another and unfortunately it wasn't enough in one of the games. Okay, <laughs> so th that's just using its second attack, counter gain, counter energy, yeah. destroying one of them yep. and then just going, cool, I'm th I have three prize cards left, what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. So oh. I guess you're going to go more aggressive there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, so it's a lot of rushes out. Anything else in particular you've hit today that's been interesting? No, I don't recall, totally. <laughs> it's uh, been a long day, right? It's been a long day. Yeah. Okay, so I think now, I think our juniors are more or less ready to go. Yeah. So we'll wrap this up here. Do you have any shout outs that you want to make? Uh, big shout outs to David Wong, giving me idea to play Stakataka and w White Kiram. Big shout outs to Tommy Lutler for saying we should ingre increase the lines. <laughs> and uh, shout outs to John Mastowe for always being a good chap. There we go. So we'll wrap up here. We'll go to a very quick break and then we'll come back with the juniors final. Thank you very much.